I remember when I was 13, my best friend at the time introduced me to the Slenderman. He showed me the Marble Hornets tapes in late 2011. We both became completely enthralled by this urban legend, so much so that we made a documentary about the Slenderman on this channel back in 2013. We also would spend hours looking at these fake Slenderman sighting videos. These videos were often dark and grainy, out of focus and shaky, which actually added to their realism. But because of the distortion in these videos, it was really hard to tell that it was always just a man in stilts. Being so young, there was genuinely a part of me that believed in the existence of the Slenderman like so many other people my age. There really was a familiarity with the vagueness of the creature. It's really no surprise to me looking back now that the Slenderman legend took off the way it did, but it seems to me that as quickly as his popularity grew, it seemed to diminish. So where did the Slenderman go? Why? And could he ever return? I often miss the old days of YouTube. Everything just seemed more authentic and more genuine. People were making videos out of genuine passion, not just trying to chase clout or make a career out of it. What once started out as a pretty fringe and niche website that you'd have to sneak onto late at night from the family computer is now a pre-installed app on almost every smartphone, as well as it's a button on a lot of TV remotes. This seems to be the killer of all things fun and interesting. I'm obviously referring to overexposure. This phenomenon is one that can be observed in many different areas of modern culture, from television shows to popular music to political movements and social trends. When an idea or topic becomes too widely discussed or heavily promoted, it can quickly lose its appeal and start to fade into irrelevance. And that is especially true with the topic of this video. The Slenderman. Slenderman was created famously on the Something Awful forum in the thread Create Paranormal Images by Eric Knudsen, aka Victor Surge, in 2009. Within the first couple of days of the two original images being uploaded, many people started creating their own Slenderman images. This was during what some considered to be the golden age of the internet, where young people were hip to new trends and the parents of these young people weren't fully engaged with the new technology just yet. Social media was much different around this time. MySpace was just passed by Facebook for the first time in monthly visitors. Also, the most subscribed YouTube channel was Fred. Yeah. Remember Fred? Hey, it's Fred! This was also during that time where pictures would come up on your timeline with the captions saying something like, if you don't repost this in the next five minutes, she's gonna show up in your room tonight. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Back in 2009, the internet was a still relatively new phenomenon and people were not super familiar with its workings as they are today. As a result, more people were likely to trust information on the internet without questioning its validity. This was especially true of the older generations that didn't grow up with the internet and were less tech savvy as I previously mentioned. Quickly, people from the forum were now posting these Slenderman pictures all over the internet and people really didn't know what to believe. The original two pictures alleged that this tall slender man was linked to multiple missing children's cases. And those people that were unable or unwilling to go and debunk this myth, hook the myth with them into their daily lives. This is why I believe the popularity of Slenderman grew so fast. He was the first urban legend created entirely online, and his inception happened at the most perfect time on the internet. There was also the release of the popular video game, Slender the Eight Pages in 2012, which skyrocketed the popularity of Slenderman. The most popular gaming commentators today created a name for themselves by playing this game alone. What? Whoa! What the hell is this? Get out of me! Get out of me! Developed by Parsec Productions, the game takes place in a dense forest and the objective is to collect eight pages that are scattered throughout the woods while avoiding the Slenderman. The game's atmosphere is one of the most notable features. 
The forest is dark and foreboding, and the player has only a flashlight to guide them through the thick fog. The sound design is excellent. The eerie sound effects and the haunting soundtrack that builds up the more pages you collect. One of the game's strengths is its simplicity. The controls are straightforward, and the objective is clear. The player doesn't need to worry about complicated mechanics or complex puzzles. The focus is on exploring the forest and avoiding Slenderman. The simplicity makes the game accessible to a wide range of players and was easy to pick up and play. However, over time players have found that the game is too repetitive and lacking in replay value. Once the player has collected all 8 pages, there isn't much incentive to play again, and the scares may lose their impact after multiple playthroughs. It is worth noting that Slender the Eight Pages was not the first Slenderman game released. In 2011, in the month of October, 64 Digits was hosting a scary game making competition when the first ever Slenderman game was made. It is short and has very simplistic graphics, yet the storyline is based around the Marble Hornet series, even displaying Slenderman's proxy, Maskey. This also inspired multiple people to make different forms of Slenderman content from Slenderman pranks to Slenderman animation. The Slenderman had completely outgrown the forum which he was created on, which wasn't without its downsides. Because of the myth of the Slenderman growing so widely outside of the control of its creator, very strange and bizarre beliefs were being told about the creature to very young and impressionable children. Big story at five, two 12 year old girls charged with trying to stab a friend to death after a sleepover. Police say they were inspired by a fictional character from the internet. And in 2014, the Waukesha stabbing happened, which I believe we are all probably familiar with at this point. A brief overview of what happened is two little girls tricked their friend into going into the woods with them so they could sacrifice her to Slenderman because they believed that this was the only way to keep the Slenderman from coming for them. If you want to hear more detail about the Slenderman stabbing, there are dozens of YouTube videos covering it. So after this video, if you are at all interested, feel free to check it out. But I guess they wanted to prove Slenderman was real by doing this. I'm not sure how that makes sense, but trying to make sense of the nonsensical is a foolish endeavor. There was also a lesser known incident that happened where a 13 year old used a kitchen knife to attack her mother as to appease the Slenderman. Now these two incidents back to back were the worst but not the last thorn in the side of old Slendy. As in 2018, the Slenderman movie would be released. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this movie is awful. I don't recommend anyone waste their time even ironically seeing this movie. It's not bad in a 1980s slasher way, it's just bad, so don't watch it. Maybe one day in the future, I'll do a full analysis of the movie on this channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Should I do that? Yes, no, let me know. Some people also found the movie to be in bad taste due to the tragedy in Waukesha but I don't really think that myself, mostly for the fact that this movie came out six years after the Slenderman hype had already died down and four years after the stabbing in Waukesha. So I think it was still appropriate, but that's just my opinion. What bums me out about the movie is that the Slenderman creator himself actually had a hand in making this movie and he had said prior to its creation this. If there's going to be a commercial exploitation of the character, I just don't want to see something that's going to be lame. <laughs> you know, I like a manager who wants their clients to get into the good movies. I just want something amazing to come of it. Something that's scary and disturbing and that's, that's kind of different. I would hate for something to come out and just be kind of conventional. And yet, that's exactly what we got. The final nail in the coffin of Slenderman because of just another Hollywood cash grab. Now here we are in current day, and the question before us is, could Slenderman ever return? Well, definitely not in the way he used to be. You see, people on the internet are far different than they were before. Also, the mystery and wonder surrounding the internet has all dwindled away. The internet is now just another tool we use in our day-to-day -day lives. The feeling of uncovering information about an otherworldly being that walks amongst us doesn't even feel real or possible anymore. 
definitely not to adults and really not even to children anymore. Also, everyone became fatigued from overexposure. Last year was the 10th year anniversary of Slender the Eight Pages and hardly anyone seemed to notice, aside from a few notable mentions. The name Slenderman will sadly forever be synonymous with the stabbing in Waukesha. Every blog or video created about the Slenderman now has to address this tragic event, leaving a lasting and permanent stain on the legacy of the Slenderman, which I think is unfortunate and not really fair, because I believe that if the Slenderman was never created, we still would have had to learn this lesson in a different time in a different place, and possibly with a much worse outcome. Could you imagine if the Momo challenge happened before the Slenderman? Those of you who weren't aware, or maybe don't remember the Momo challenge, this is Momo. Now Momo targeted children by encouraging them to text a number on WhatsApp, which would then send them instructions to complete a series of increasingly bizarre and dangerous tasks, ranging from watching a horror movie, engaging in self-harm, to then committing self-exit the game in real life. Many people fell victim to this troll, and I believe that even more would have had Slenderman not have come first. Slenderman is probably the closest thing my generation will come to an iconic horror monster, which for that reason alone, I'd love to see a revival of his popularity. But I don't really know what could reignite the excitement for him. Maybe an actual good movie? Maybe a video game that touches on the actual lore of the creature? I don't really know. However, I think given enough time and the rights of the Slenderman in good hands, we could see a rebirth of the Slenderman as a mainstream horror icon. Think about how fatigued and burnt out people were in the 90s about the slasher genre that took hold in the 80s. Yet the most successful horror movies today are reboots of these old slasher franchises. I believe enough people are prone to nostalgia when reminiscing about the Slenderman. I know I am, and so it's possible. But what do you think? Is the Slenderman just a bad meme finally gone stale? Or is there something special enough about the Slenderman that he should re-emerge from the shadowed forests to scare us all once again? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.